want to be set free. It is our regular plea to God. We pray, set me free from my infirmity, from this pain that never leaves my wrist, my hip, my gut, my heart. Set me free from this anxiety that swirls, this depression that descends and clouds and distorts, this melancholy that suffocates. Set us free from pandemics, from systemic racism, from the patriarchy, from homophobia and transphobia. We have been bound up by sin, our own and the brokenness that harms us all. We are bound by our own mortality and by the evil that stalks life on earth. We plead for freedom. And our ears trill to hear Jesus' powerful words, unbind him. But can we let go? You've got, I, I know, a problem in your life right now. It's not like a big problem. You know, it's a nagging problem. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's just something that you encounter day after day after day, and it is killing you. You know? You know what I'm talking about, right? And you know also that there is a solution to this problem, but that solution will almost certainly involve, one, more work on your part, and two, that you have to let go of something. The only way to deal with those dishes that endlessly pile in the sink is to let your spouse handle them even though she always loads the dishwasher the wrong way. You get this. <laughs> the only way to solve that problem with your colleague is going to be to have that difficult conversation that you are so afraid to have. The only way to make your aging parent safer is to find a new place for them to live. The problem is killing you. And the new life that you long for is only accessible when you let something go. It's a painful truth. And it's true for society, too. The only way to unbind those who are impoverished will be to let go of power, to let go of any ideas of worthiness or any bootstraps mentality that assign the poor their lot by the false idea that they have earned it. The only way to unbind us from racism will be to let go of valorizing stories from our past that hide our most grievous sins. The only way to unbind those who are transgender or non-binary is to let go of the idea that made in God's image means following society's definitions of gender. The only way to unbind the natural world from our polluting domin domination will be to let go of the idea that God gave it to us for our abuse. To let go of the idea that God's resurrection won't extend to animals, plants, water, and air. Ultimately, the only path to equity, the only path to peace, will be for us to let go of the endless quest for power. Years ago, I heard Valparaiso Professor Meredith's Fred Niener speak to a room of brand new pastors, little baby pastors we were. It was one of the most moving talks I've ever attended, and I actually wrote him for a copy of his remarks, which I treasure. I've probably told you this before, so I hope you'll bear with me. But maybe it was the time in my life. I buried my first child. We were contemplating trying again. My call was disintegrating before my eyes. I spent the conference largely in tears. And I think at the time Fred was supposed to be leading a Bible study on Acts 
Because this was the year that all these little baby pastors were going to grow our churches threefold. So why not hear about the greatest period of growth the church ever saw, save the year Constantine legalized Christianity? But thanks be to God, Fred didn't lead us through Acts. Instead, he just told us the truth. He told us that this work, being a saint, is hard. He told us that life is hard and at times very cruel. In fact, it is so hard that it will kill us all eventually. In fact, he said, the church is just a bunch of crucified people making plans. Isn't that the truth? We say that we were baptized into death because only when we have died and been buried with Christ can we also rise with him. We say that this community, this communion of saints, as Pastor Alicia spoke about, this is a community of broken people who die every day to sin. We're just a bunch of crucified people making fun. We're dead. We're bound up in grave clothes. We quite frankly stink. We're Lazarus in this story. And that's the thing, right? This little tete -a tete at the tomb is just about the last waypoint for Jesus before he enters Jerusalem the final time. He's only about a week away from his own death. And Neener says, Jesus could have said, heads up, I'm coming in. But he doesn't. He calls Lazarus out of that tomb. Jesus says to Lazarus, essentially, at least in Neener's reckoning, come out of there, friend. Anyone can die of cancer or pneumonia or humiliation or garden variety mortification. Let us go up to Jerusalem and do it right. Let's give our lives away. Unbind let go. It is no small call to let go of our own lives, to give ourselves away. Often the letting go is forced upon us. We let go of our job when we are laid off. We let go of our child when they go to college. We let go of our beloved's when they die. But we trust that letting go means new life. That a pink slip is also a promise of new opportunity. We trust that the person who we pack away on that first day of college comes back an amazing adult. And that when we let go of our beloveds, we trust that we will join them in the resurrection yet to come. It is no small call to go from death of one kind to death of another. But then again, it isn't really death to death, but also life to life. <clears throat> Letting go is what it is to be mortal. What it is to live in this world, as Mary Oliver titles a beautiful poem I often return to this time of year, which reads... Look, the trees are turning their own bodies into pillars of light, are giving off the rich fragrance of cinnamon and fulfillment. The long tapers of cattails are bursting and floating away over the blue shoulders of the ponds. And every pond, no matter what its name is, is nameless now. Every year, everything I have ever learned in my lifetime leads back to this. The fires, and the black river of loss, whose other side is salvation, whose meaning none of us will ever know. To live in this world, you must be able to do three things. To love what is mortal, to hold it against your bones, knowing your own life depends on it, and when the time comes to let it go, to let it go. Beloved, we are hanging on to so much. Let us let go today. We 
so sure all of this is going to set us free, but it won't. The only path to freedom, the only path to change, is to let go of the things that will not save us. To be willing to let go of our very selves. Because it isn't until we let go of the only thing that was ever ours to give away will we know what it is to live in the fullness of God's love. And the only thing that was ever truly ours to let go of, the only thing that God had saved for us, the only peace God unbound from the cross, is ourselves. Let us let go and give ourselves away.